Well, welcome to another edition of Sports Blab. I kind of got my Bill Belichick look with the hoodie sweatshirt, you know, and the hood and whatever. The difference is, though, is he cuts off his sleeves, so they're always cut off here, always. I don't know. question is, does he do it, or is it, is it come that way from the manufacturer? I don't know. No, well, since I'm going to be talking about baseball, i gotta got to take the hood off, hoodie part off. Okay, so let's talk about baseball. Well, uh, uh, we're in the midst of the COVID-19 crisis now, the coronavirus here in year 2020. Uh, here's my quick public service announcement. Wear your face mask. Social distance. Wash your hands. Very simple. We can all do it. will help tremendously. Uh, but I want to go back about 100 years to the 1918 uh, Spanish flu pandemic uh, that occurred at that time and the effect it had on the world of sports. Keep in mind, on top of all this, is sitting World War I. And World War I had a major impact on, on the sports world. And then you add in the flu and there's even more impact. So let's go through a few tidbits, a few points of trivia that relate to that period of time. The major sports at that time were baseball, college football, uh, and boxing. And uh, the hockey was kind of in its infant stages then. Uh, but let's talk about baseball first. So and I want to talk in particular about the... Uh, World Series of 1918 between the Boston Red Sox and the Chicago Cubs. So at that time, it was common for teams to switch stadiums within their own city because one might have more uh, attendance capacity than the other. So that's what the Cubs did. Instead of playing at Wigan Field, which we now call Wrigley Field, they played at Comiskey Park, which is, you know, south end of Chicago, because it held more people. Uh, the Red Sox were the previous two World Series in 1914 and 1916, which they were in. They played at Braves Field, which is kind of near the modern day where Boston University sits, rather than Fenway because it had more capacity. But in this World Series, they, they played it in Fenway Park. So, and rosters were depleted. Players are being drafted because of the war. Uh, the quality of the baseball wasn't always there. People grumbled about it, but, you know, it's the war. However, Babe Ruth was there, and he played as a star pitcher, as we all know, for the Boston Red Sox. That year, 1918, Babe Ruth, for the first time ever, switched between pitching, he was a lefty, and hitting, or sorry, pitching and playing outfields. He played both positions type of thing. And obviously, when he went to the Yankees, he had you know, make the big switch. So that's kind of interesting. So uh, curiously enough, in 1918, Babe Ruth got the Spanish flu in May. Now, mind you, the Spanish flu came in two waves. Actually, it came in three or four waves. But the first wave hit in May, the spring of that year around May. Millions worldwide got sick from this flu, but it was a very mild flu. And then the flu mutated in the fall, and that's when it became deadly. So a few statistics. The world population back then, 1918, it was about 1.8 billion. 500 million people worldwide got infected. 50 to 100 million people of those that got infected of the 500 million died from the Spanish flu. So that second, it occurred, uh, the, the killing season, if you will, for that flu occurred from about mid-September to mid-November. That's the main compression period when most of the deaths occurred. Uh... So let's just talk a few more statistics. In that 1918 World Series, pitching was the dominant factor of that World Series. No home runs were hit. Red Sox only scored like nine runs uh, the whole series, but they won it. And they had an ERA, and here's an indication of how well the pitching went. The Red Sox, their ERA was 1.70. That's monster ERA for the series. The Cubs had even better, 1.04. The Red Sox batted 186, the Cubs 210. Now, ironically, since the Cubs did better with the ERA and hitting, you'd think they would win, but they didn't. Uh, there's one reason why. Let's call him Babe Ruth, who hit the winning run in Game 6, etc., 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 and pitched phenomenal that series. Okay, so, because of the war, not the flu, the baseball season in 1918 started when it should on April 16th, but because of the war and the draft and everything, they were ordered by basically the War Act to end that season early. So the season they lopped off, the end of the season, the World Series was played in about seven days. And it's the only World Series, seven to ten days. And it was the only World Series where the entire World Series was played in September. And it's 
because remember it's because of the war not the flu yet the, the, so yeah oh uh one thing uh which is probably similar to what they're experiencing today uh gate revenues are greatly reduced right attendance attendance for the world series wasn't as big as they were hoping it was kind of down but the players got into a heated debate uh with management over revenue and almost for game six they basically went on the strike it was delayed and the reason being because gate receipts the series share for the players was a lot less because for the first time ever all first division teams shared in revenue which made the player share less so anyways so on a few more facts here uh all right, we went over some of that. Uh, oh, in this flu period in 1918 in the world of sports, there's always uh, WCCO, the local news channel, interviewed a sports medicine doctor who said we can do uh, community measures that we do now for COVID-19 and apply them to baseball, meaning we can figure out ways to social distance. Uh, players, umpires, catchers, whatever, managers wear masks. Well, guess what? In 1918, they did. Fans wore masks. Players wore masks. Umpires wore masks. Catchers wore masks. Pitchers wore masks. So wearing a mask now is nothing new. They did it 100 years ago. Uh, let's see here. Now, ironically, speaking of the flu, uh, Boston, if you read the history of the Spanish flu of 1918, Boston essentially was the epicenter. And why? Well, a couple of reasons why in the world. Well, yeah. So the soldiers coming back from the war were coming, a lot of them were coming back to Boston Harbor, major transition point. And right north of Boston was Fort Devens. Fort Devens is where the first, one of the biggest outbreaks occurred. I mean, certainly in Kansas at Funston. But Fort Devens was a major player. Boston became an epicenter. But it wasn't only just the soldiers coming back from war. There was a lot of social events going on in Boston at that time. The World Series, uh, the draft registration parties, if you will, uh, and finally, Liberty Loan Parades, which they had in different cities, Philadelphia, Boston, wherever. Those events attracted thousands of people. Viruses love thousands of people because it's easy to transmit, and that's what happened. So ironically, while this is a historic baseball game, and ironically, the Red Sox would not win another World Series until 19, or sorry, until 2004, 86 years later. You know, Big Pappy hit those home runs and Kurt Schilling, whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. All right. Let's go on to college football for a little bit here. Again, that was one of the big sports then at that time was college football. I've been playing, they've been playing football for something like 50 years. Well, because of the war and maybe to some degree the flu, uh, because they also lost a lot of players and coaches to the draft, they started their games in October and November. And again, fans wore masks there, but because of the war slash and the effects of the flu, remember in October and November is when this flu is striking heavy, a lot of teams didn't play. There was like 18 college teams that didn't play. And charity games were becoming more popular, you know, more military games, more charity games, whatnot, whatnot. And then as the flu spread, then high school games got canceled. In the world of boxing, there was a big uh, heavyweight championship match between Jack Dempsey and Badlin Nowinski, and that got canceled. And ironically, the 1918 Stanley Cup also got canceled when both players from both teams were hospitalized. So the point I'm trying to make with all this stuff, sports trivia, you know, it's, it's interesting and fun, uh, but there's so much relation, direct parallels between 1918 and the Spanish flu, and today in 2020 with COVID-19. And the issues you see out there in the sports world today with, with uh, seasons and events being canceled and leagues trying to figure out how can we reopen and talk about wearing masks and should they be on TV and not TV, etc., etc. A lot of those same issues were dealt with in 1918. And keep in mind, on top of the flu, or the flu was on top of the war. So they got a double whammy back then. Anyways, I find it all very interesting, and I hope you find it interesting. And if you want to see more direct parallels uh, between 1918, the Spanish flu, and today, I suggest you read a book called The Great Influenza by John Barry. It is mind-numbing, mind-numbing, mind-blowing to read that book. And by the way, 
The reason it's called the Spanish flu is not because it hit Spain harder than anyone else, although Spain was a neutral country in that war. Now, they got hit hard like everybody else, like today. But back then, because of war concerns, governments were censoring newspapers and would not let journalists and newspapers talk about the, the effects of the Spanish flu in the newspapers because it would kill morale. But Spain was neutral. They had no such limitations. So the Spanish reporters, like the reporters of today, all over the world, went crazy talking about the Spanish flu and how many deaths here and misery here and people sick. And they did it to such an extent, they, they got such a reputation, people just called this the Spanish flu, because they, they were the only journalists to report on this flu. Anyways, that's Sports Blab, over and out. One little final piece of trivia. In that 1918 World Series, Game 1 in Comiskey Park in Chicago, during the seventh inning stretch, the marching band that was playing then spontaneously broke into the Star Spangled Banner. Well, the fact that they played it then and it caught on to other sporting events such that by World War II, it was a tradition to play the Star Spangled Banner before the game began uh, for all sports.